Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our text this morning is from our gospel reading. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my sister and my brother. This is our text. Dear friends, sisters, and brothers in Christ Jesus. I don't know if, if any of you, I, I have, I've kept my time subscription from when I lived up in the vicinity of New York, and there's an article this morning uh, by David French, who's a Christian lawyer, uh, discussing his experience with, with Christian nationalism in his former denomination. Uh, it's something that actually I recently have been thinking about a lot. I've been um, paying attention to, I guess, uh, the, the spread of this particular ideology in, um, shall we say, the, the dark corners of the internet and its infiltration into the Christian church in this country. Um, and I want to say something about it. I, just to, I want to clarify terms, because it's a term that, that maybe doesn't communicate really what it is initially. Right? When, you, when you say Christian nationalism, what it may sound like is you're talking about you know, someone who's Christian and someone who's patriotic. And that's not what we're talking about. We're also not talking about people who would like, in various ways, maybe in, in the law and culture of this country, to see it become uh, more Christian. Um, that's another issue. Uh, truthfully, I could speak to that real fast. You know what the fastest way to make America more Christian is? Is for American Christians to be more Christian. Uh, so that's your homework. And uh, you, can, uh, you can begin the revival of America this afternoon. Um, but what I'm talking about, this is a, is a deceptive term, because when, when these Christian nationalists, at least the ones I'm thinking of, when they talk about nation, they're not talking about our country. They're talking about ethnos. They're talking about people that you are related to, connected to, by culture and by blood. And so what we're talking here really is, is a form of racism, uh, or ethnocentrism, a kind of white Christian nationalism um, that says that, that, right, that it's natural that people tend to gravitate towards people who are like themselves, and, and that's, that's right and good, and so we should, we should stick up for, for our people, right, however you, you define that. And, uh, and moreover, we should, we should work to make our country and our church uh, safer and um, a safe place for, for our, our people. And this idea, this idea is out there, right? Um, and, and I want to, I just want to be, be very clear that that is completely at odds with the way that, that Jesus defines his church in our reading today. Right? It, of course, it's, it's the case that from, from time immemorial, right, people have, as the old, how's the old saying go, right, blood is thicker than water, right, people tend to, right, look out for their, their family first, or their, their tribe, or their community, people who are like them. Um, but Jesus gives us a whole new kind of community in our reading today. Uh, I love this reading, this is a, you, you don't think about, I mean, how many of you have ever, you don't have to raise your hand. Has anybody ever here ever run into, you know, like, conflict or drama within your larger family? <laughs> All right, I see, I see somebody shaking their head. God bless you. Um, and um, the, right, this is, this is, right, Jesus knew about, about conflict in, in the family, right? Like, his mom and his brother show up because they think he's crazy, we need to go take him someplace and lock him up. Um, I think uh, this is a, a very, I, I would love, well, in heaven, I hope I have the opportunity to like sit and speak with, with the Blessed Virgin Mary about this episode uh, and what, what she was thinking, right? 
But, but they come and they, and they say, hey, Jesus, your, your family's here. And he says, what does he say? Who is my family? Right? Right, you're my brothers and mother, right? Whoever does the will of God is my sister and brother and mother. Um, that's very profound, right? And what is to do the will of God, right? The, the gospel tells us right? to, to do the will of God is to believe in the one that he has sent, right? And so whoever believes in Jesus, right, is connected to Jesus by faith, is Jesus' brother or sister or mother. Jesus has come into the world to create a new family. Uh, I talked about this in my newsletter article, so if you haven't read it, you can go back and, and read it, right? That, that Jesus has come into the world to, to become our brother, to adopt us as his brothers and sisters, which in turn gives us a father in heaven, right? We get to share, as Jesus' adopted siblings, we get to share in his relationship to his father in heaven. And that's why, why we're calling on God as father is so, so central to the way Jesus talks about God and the way that he teaches his disciples to talk about God. Because in doing that, Right? He is inviting them, he's inviting us to share in his relationship with his Father, which is an enormous, enormous privilege and blessing. It's the sort of thing that you, know, you could meditate on it the rest of your life and never get your head around it. An enormous gift that you should be children of God. But there's a, there's a second side to that. There's, a, there's an that has an implication, right? Which is that if, if I am by adoption, if I am a child of God, and you are a child of God, what does that make us to each other? It makes us siblings, right? And so what Jesus has come into the world to do is not only to give us a, a new a vertical relationship to God, you might say, but to give us a new relationship to one another as well, right? And I think that's enormously important to remember. It's easy, it's easy to forget, right? Because just like in any family, the church sometimes has a little drama, right? I mean, not, you know, you guys are pretty low drama, thank you, um, <laughs> right? Right, but sometimes, right, sometimes there are sharp elbows, sometimes people disagree. But even in the midst of that, even in the midst of, of, of all those things, you remain, this is an objective fact in Christ Jesus, you remain brother and sister to one another. And so there's a, a, there's a new, new relationship here. Um, and so remember, like when, before you say anything to each other or about one another, you ask, you know, would, I, would I say that, would I say that or about my, my brother or my sister? It may depend on what kind of family you're in, right? Um, it's an amazing gift. And it doesn't just stop, right? It doesn't just stop at the walls of, of this church. Um, every, every baptized Christian is your, your sister or your brother. And, and that necessarily has to change the way that, that we think about our fellow human beings, right? I, I no longer have the luxury of, of, I don't know, sort of like taking care of my tribe and, and loving my people against everyone else or anyone else, right? Because, you know, if, if uh, as they say, the, the blood is thicker than water, well, guess what? The water of baptism is thicker than blood, because it's thickened by the blood of Jesus. And that means that, that you have sisters and brothers in Mexico and in Venezuela and in China and in Ukraine and in Russia and in Israel and in the West Bank and in Africa. Right? In all those places, you have sisters and brothers, people who, have, who, have, who speak different languages than you, who have different culture than you, who eat different foods, who have different skin colors than you do, and yet, 
and yet they are your flesh and blood in Christ Jesus. Which means that, that right, our concern necessarily has to be for all people in the world. Because we have brothers and sisters scattered throughout the world. And that's, you know, truthfully, that's a, that's a great gift. Because sometimes as a Christian, you can, we could feel alone. And, and what a wonderful thing to know that, that, you know, right now, at least correcting for time zone, that right there, there are, you have brothers and sisters around the world who are, who are praying for us. They don't even know it, but, but they are. And, and we are a mighty, a mighty family, a mighty body, the body of Christ, representing the love of Jesus in the world. And so it's my prayer for you this day that you would remember that and give thanks for it and live it until that day when you see all those sisters and brothers face to face in the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.